So let's get right to it. A morning must read. Uh, Rula Kalef uh, writing in the Financial Times today, and this is some of the tension into the weekend on Brexit. The prime minister is stalling instead of getting on with the job of negotiating the exit. The prime minister may believe that more votes will translate into more concessions from Brussels. No one cares about the election. Whether Mrs. May is strong or weak is irrelevant to the positions of the 27, count them, 27 countries she faces in the Brexit talks. John Norman with his J.P. Morgan and Mr. Boodle of Capital uh, Economics. The Trouble with Europe is your wonderful book. What's the trouble with Brexit? What does uh, Prime Minister May need to do now with that complexity? Well, I think, first of all, you have to recognize that she is running for election. And so it's pretty daft, I think, to imagine her laying out the Brexit plan or getting deeply Agreed. involved in negotiations. Okay. She's got to win the election first. I don't agree, actually, with this correspondent's view that uh, the outcome of the election doesn't really matter. OK, in Brussels, they may not be uh, sitting there with bated breath. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if she, if she wins with a very big majority, this, in my view, is extremely right. important because it gives her control of the whole, whole process. She doesn't have to worry about her own party that's really the then important why thing. do you in the telegraph write about plan a plan b plan c plan d why does she need plans why doesn't she just say from her political strength this is what we want this is our negotiating point well i think she will uh, when the election's out of the way and once they've done the necessary work to prepare for all this. But she doesn't need plan C and D, but in my view, she does need a plan B. Because if you put everything on plan A, then you really are handing your opponents, I think, a gift because they know you've got nowhere else to go. I think it's very important they know we have got somewhere else to go. Um, let's, let's think a little bit about where this is going to leave us. Let's assume, and we're in a general election period and there are plenty of other uh, parties contesting this election, but let's mm. assume that she ends up with a majority. Mm. And she goes into this, into this debate with a plan B, with a plan A and a plan B. How does the other side respond to, to those two plans? She needs to put plan B, B on the table. Do you think that they go, well, actually, OK, so you're going to be fine without us? Do you think that's how, do you think that's how the other side of the table are going to react? Well, for a start, we talk about the other side, but um, really it's a very strange animal, isn't it? There's the European Commission, and there are 27 countries, and those countries have got very different interests. But at the moment, they're speaking with one voice. Well, mm. officially, maybe, I don't know. Behind the scenes, they certainly aren't. And you've also got all these European businesses with a strong interest in getting some sort of deal. Yeah. So I, I think, actually, the political process within Europe is going to be extremely interesting once we get down right. to the brass tacks. Who's going to be pushing for what? I think we're in quite a difficult position, okay. actually.